Hey guys, Nintendrew here. When you think of the original Nintendo DS library, chances are your mind goes straight to family-friendly classics like New Super Mario Bros., Brain Age, and Nintendogs. But the DS was also home to a very small collection of titles that were geared toward a, a more mature audience. And that very small group of games has been the subject of one of my game collecting goals as of recent. Uh, to be more precise, the DS has 11 M-rated titles, uh, rated M for Mature by the ESRB. And in this video, we'll take a look at these 11 titles, check out some gameplay, and we'll see exactly how they earned their rating. So, let's get right into it! Okay, so like I mentioned, we've got 11 mature rated titles to go through here, and I'll be listing them in order of their release dates. So, first up is Resident Evil Deadly Silence. <laughs> Deadly Silence is an upgraded port of the original Resident Evil on PlayStation, and was published as part of the series' 10th year anniversary. If you played the original, you pretty much know what to expect, although the game did add some additional features, including a first-person knife battle mechanic which used the DS's touchscreen to fend off attackers. And of course, as expected from a zombie-themed survival horror game, this title was rated M due to blood and gore and intense violence. Obviously, at this point, Resident Evil has had plenty of ports for numerous platforms, and if you wanted to play the game today, there's probably a better way to do so. But if you're a fan of the series, Deadly Silence does do a good job of recreating the Resident Evil experience on a handheld, and adds enough extra content to keep things interesting. Next up on the list is Touch the Dead. Continuing on with the undead theme, Touch the Dead is a horror-themed rail shooter where players use the DS stylus to take aim at incoming zombies on the touchscreen. The game feels very much in the same vein as similar arcade-style rail shooters like House of the Dead. Critics generally gave Touch the Dead fairly average reviews, citing original gameplay with less than stellar graphics. However, those blocky zombie faces were still realistic enough to earn the game an M rating on grounds of gore and violence. Personally, when I played this title, it didn't really stand out to me, but it did provide some standard zombie hunting entertainment for the short time it kept my attention. Alright, after Touch the Dead came Dimensium the Ward. I think this title is really interesting. Dimensium is a survival horror FPS which was originally planned to be an entry in the Silent Hill series. But when the developer Renegade Kid was turned down by Konami for the franchise rights, they decided to go on with the project and develop the shooter into their own IP. Although the game saw mixed reception on launch, it has been looked back on as a bit of a cult classic, and certainly one of the most technically impressive titles for the DS, especially so early in the system's lifespan. Uh, like many other titles on this list, the game was rated M for Mature on grounds of gore and violence. Personally, I have to commend this game for its excellent atmosphere and sound design. Just on principle, it seems like a survival horror game shouldn't be able to work on a platform like the DS, but Dimension does an excellent job of immersing you in the unsettling environment of Redmore Hospital and keeping you on edge throughout the single-player campaign. If that sounds like your sort of game, definitely check this one out. Next up on the list is Ultimate Mortal Kombat. So this one is a handheld port of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, which was released in arcades back in 1995. The M rating should be no surprise here, of course Mortal Kombat is a series which prides itself on over-the-top, hyper-gory combat and finishing moves. Much like Resident Evil Deadly Silence, this one's sort of a what-you-see-is-what-you-get type deal. If you're a fan of the series, this iteration is a fine way to play Mortal Kombat. And this port also includes the Puzzle Combat minigame which debuted with Mortal Kombat Deception. Coming up next is uh, Teresia. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> If you've gotten tired of zombie shooters, this game will be a breath of fresh air. Teresia is really a fascinating and unique title for DS. The game is described as a psychological horror adventure game, and certainly it has some of the darkest and most disturbing content on the platform. Especially if you're into classic PC adventure games like Myst or Shadowgate, you should keep this one on your radar. Teresia puts you in the shoes of a young girl with amnesia, and tasks you with escaping a huge, deadly labyrinth riddled with booby traps around every corner. Throughout the game, you'll overcome the protagonist's personal demons and learn more details about her past. This title earned its mature rating with blood, violence, and strong language. Definitely not one to play with the kiddos, but a very compelling adventure nonetheless. Alright, next up, this one was a little bit more popular. This is Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. This entry strikes me as kind of a throwback to the early days of Grand Theft Auto. Chinatown Wars, like its early home console siblings, is a top-down action-adventure game set in a sprawling open-world city. 
It might be easy to dismiss this entry as a watered-down mobile port, but you would be mistaken. In fact, this title is actually the highest rated DS game of all time according to Metacritic with an aggregate review score of 93 out of 100. This game earned its M rating as a result of blood and gore, drug references, sexual content, strong language, and violence. All par for the course from a GTA title. And if you're a fan of the series, you owe it to yourself to give this title a go. Next on the list is Core, another FPS. This game is a science fiction shooter in which the player takes on the role of a combat marine investigating a lost research facility built on the site of a meteor impact which has caused some strange effects on the surrounding environment. Unfortunately, this game didn't seem to strike a chord with critics quite as well as Chinatown Wars did, and reviewers harshly criticized the game's level design, combat, and controls. Personally, I have to agree there. The game is certainly another technical marvel for the DS, but the gameplay isn't really anything to write home about. As you've probably guessed by now, this title was rated M for gore and violence. Alright, after that, next up is Crime Scene. This game is pretty much exactly what you'd expect from the name and cover art. You go around inspecting crime scenes, collecting evidence, and pinpointing perpetrators. Throughout investigations, you'll use the touch screen to manipulate tools like a fingerprint brush and sample swabs, then return to the office to interpret your findings. The game is rated M because, of course, with that subject matter comes scenes of homicide and references to drug abuse, that sort of thing. Much like Core, this one didn't really hold my attention, but it is an interesting point of DS history. That being said, if you're looking for a great crime investigation game, you might be better off picking up something like Hotel Dusk. Great game. Alright, after that came Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey. This title is unique to this list because it is the only M-rated RPG on the platform. The plot follows a special task force sent in to investigate a spatial anomaly that has mysteriously appeared in Antarctica, and to destroy the source of the disruption before it engulfs the planet. In line with the game's title, you'll have to explore some bizarre parallel universes, and recruit demons to fight alongside you as you progress through the story. The game was critically acclaimed for its strong gameplay elements and compelling narrative. And as far as rating goes, this one was deemed to be for mature audiences only due to blood, fantasy violence, strong language, partial nudity, and sexual themes. If you've got time to sit down and invest in a new JRPG, Strange Journey would be a great choice. Next up is the sequel to Dimension the Ward, Dimension 2. Much like the first game, Dimension 2 is a survival horror FPS set in a psychiatric hospital, which in reality seems more like a maximum security prison than a place of rehabilitation. This sequel improved and built upon everything laid out by its predecessor, and addressed some of the issues fans and critics raised about the original game. And of course, the game was rated M for the same reasons as well, blood, gore, and violence. To be honest, I never got to play the original title until well after I had beaten this one, the sequel. But the story is well contained and flows just fine as a standalone experience, so if you're curious about the series, I'd recommend you pick up this title, as it's got quite a few improvements over the first game. Like I mentioned earlier, the, the idea of a survival horror game on DS just seems kind of funny at first thought, but the developers really ran with it and made a great experience in the end. Highly recommend it. And finally, the last mature rated title for Nintendo DS is 999, 9 hours, 9 persons, 9 doors. And what a title to end on. Really, this game is awesome. I, I've got to be honest, I had heard great things about this game for a long time, but never had the time to sit down and play it until I started recording for this episode. But as soon as I got into it, I was hooked, and I beat the entire campaign in one sitting. It was just that engaging. Basically, the game is split into two types of sections, one part visual novel and one part escape game where you'll be locked in a room and have to solve hidden puzzles to progress through to the next challenge. The story is also a very high point. The gist of it is you've been kidnapped alongside eight other people and must compete in a deadly game, much like the plot of the Saw movies. Throughout the story, you'll get to pick your path and your allies and eventually reach one of six different endings with varying levels of success. And of course, due to the dark subject matter, this game earned an M rating for blood, violence, drug references, strong language, and suggestive themes. But if you're at all intrigued by this sort of action thriller puzzle game, you've got to give 999 a try. Excellent title. Alright guys, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this glimpse of the more dark and seedy side of the DS library, and if you did, please consider subscribing to Nintendrew for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share the video with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this new video and for making it all the way to the end. Hope you enjoyed. If you like what I'm doing and would like to help out the channel, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen, and otherwise I hope you'll look forward to the next one. Take care.